in this video, we'll have a big picture of what defects we can have in crystalline materials. We'll look at different types of defects according to their degree of dimensions. Starting from the zero dimensional defects. In the first case, let's assume it's a pure material with no foreign atoms. If we take one atom away, that creates a vacancy. If we squeeze an atom into the lattice, that creates the self-interstitial. In the second case, you can have foreign atoms present in the material. They are usually called alloying elements or dopants. If you replace a host atom by the foreign atom, it is called a substitutional foreign atom. You can also have the foreign atom much, much smaller than the host atoms, so they can fill in the gaps. And this is called an interstitial foreign atom. There are a couple of things I have to say about the zero-dimensional defects. For the intrinsic point defects, especially vacancies, there's no way for you to completely get rid of them. Regardless how well you prepare your specimen, you will always have some point defects in your material. For the extrinsic point defects, let's call them solid solution atoms here, they can strongly interact with dislocations, which we'll discuss in details in a later video. Moving from zero dimension to one dimension, we have line defects, and these are dislocations. Dislocations will be the focus of this series of videos. The two examples you see here, the white lines you see are dislocation lines, and these images were acquired using the weak beam dark field method in TEM. Moving to two-dimensional defects, these are also called planar defects. In the micrograph on the left, you can see these fringe-like features. These are stacking faults. Stacking faults are one type of planar defects. In the micrograph in the middle, you see those sharp interfaces. These interfaces are twin boundaries. Across the twin boundary, the crystals exhibit mirror symmetry. We'll talk more about the uh, stacking faults and the twin boundaries when we discuss dislocations in FCC crystals. The third type is the most common one, grain boundaries. All these lines you see here in this TEM micrograph are grain boundaries. The presence of grain boundaries will hinge the free movement of dislocations. Again, we'll discuss this in a later video. Moving from two dimensions to three dimensions, we have the volumetric defects. In 3D, we can take away material, and that leaves us pores. All the features you see here are pores in the boron carbide sample. We can also put foreign atoms in the material, and these foreign atoms will segregate to form second phases. The platelets you see in the second micrograph are nanoprecipitates in the boron carbide sample. The presence of precipitates can also interact with the free movement of dislocations, leading to strengthening. I hope now you have developed a good understanding on the defects in crystals and where dislocations fit in this big picture. In the next video, we'll touch upon three things. First, what is the ideal strength of a material? and why we usually do not get to the ideal strength of the material. Second, what are the types of dislocations? And third, what are the basic properties of dislocations?